So hush, little baby doll, you cry. One of these mornings, you're gonna rise up singing, and you'll take This is one of the main problems in organ transplants. The organism protects itself against foreign matter, even if it is a new heart that would keep it alive. The protoplasm itself harbours its own, nurtures itself against the world, against invasions of its integrity. It seems to enjoy its own pulsations, expanding into the world and ingesting pieces of it. That was one of the many fantastic passages in The Denial of Death by Ernest Becker. To summarise the book, his point is that we want to propagate ourselves out into the world, but death stops that, and so we're afraid of death. And we act out the role of a hero in some small way in order to convince ourselves that we're powerful compared to the universe and compared to death. So alongside the image of a body rejecting the organ transplant, Becker gives us the image of a child. And the child is at the same time fragile and narcissistic. The fragility comes from an encounter with the world, for example, a child trying to touch something hot is either going to be rejected by his parents as they tell him off or her off, or the hot thing itself as the child experiences how hot it indeed is. And the narcissism comes from the child's perceptions that they're omnipotent, that's how Becker describes it, because the child screams and cries and always gets what they want from the parents who will feed and comfort it. And so, as a result, there's this almost miraculous omnipotence. So the fragility of the child is the beginnings of the concept of death. And the narcissism of the child means that they can't come to terms with this emerging concept. Because if they are as they seem to be, the most important being in the universe, then how can they come to terms with their own death? Becker also talks a lot about our smallness in the face of the universe. He uses the word anality, which is a technical term. I'm sure you can guess what that means. Uh, and he talks about the fact that we can observe the universe. We're conscious of it, but we're still unable to overcome it. Nature can be lovely and inviting, but it can also be harsh and bleak. And these aspects combined with disease and death are continual reminders of our inability to ultimately meet the challenge of the universe. As a side note, this conversation is getting a little bit morbid and a lot of people will probably stop at this stage and say, well, psychologists are this way. They are morbid because they're continually in the company of people who have a dim view of life. And I think it's also right to say that we're not being completely honest with our emotions if we say that this fear of death is the, the dominant force and there's no love of life that we experience. But there's also the flip side, if you love something, then you don't want to lose it. So I'm open to believing that we do have this fear of death if it's in the background, underlying. And according to Becker, the reason that we don't experience this on the surface consciously in our day-to-day -day lives is because of what he calls repression. So we'll be looking at what he means by repression in the next video.